Hey guys, welcome, welcome back. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Kelly and uh, I own a sewing and embroidery business as well as a fabric business. Um, and on this channel, we do a lot of those things. Uh, sewing, embroidery, today we're going to applique a mermaid, which I'm very excited about. And uh, occasionally other crafty things, if I can, if something kind of sparks my interest and I think other people might like it, I might do a video on that. But anyway, if any of that interests you, please uh, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Helps me out a lot um, as a newbie kind of trying to grow. Uh, anyway, so like I said, today we are going to do a mermaid applique and I'm really excited about it because if you've been watching my videos, um, I recently got some skin tone fabric and this is for sale in my fabric shop, which is linked below. Uh, also, I'm running a uh, contest right now, a giveaway on Instagram where you can win this bundle along with a few other goodies. So if you'll go to Instagram, again, I'll post that below to Project Fabrics uh, is my Instagram name. It's my business name for the fabric. And all you have to do, since, I'm, since it's a brand new Instagram page, really all you have to do is follow me on Instagram, but also if you'll comment on that post with um, your email or whatever, but it, I'll find you. Again, I don't, Now's a good time because I don't anticipate there's going to be a lot of competition to win this. So, because again, I'm just trying to grow. So go on Instagram, uh, like it, say something, or, you know, or follow is the main thing. You have to be following me to, to be qualified, but that's really about it. Anyone who follows me is going to um, uh, be in the running to win. So anyway, I need to, all that to say, I need to update some of my Etsy listings. I really got to focus on my embroidery Etsy. I've been so focused on the fabric that some of this has kind of fallen by the wayside and I'm not making, I got a ton of shirts over here. I need to get something on them and get them out the door. Um, but anyway, I have a mermaid on my shop and it's a very, very vanilla uh, mermaid and so I want different skin tones I want different hair different options because I mean that's a huge you don't you don't a two-year-old or a three-year-old four-year-old does not want a mermaid that doesn't look like them so I mean they might actually they might but a lot of people want you know something that looks like their kid so anyway I've got these and we're gonna use that today um, as well as I'm going to, it's going to be a, probably a long video today. I'm also going to go through how to use different kinds of materials that aren't fabric, uh, like this glitter. Um, can you see that it's glittery? Anyway, this stuff is from Hobby Lobby and it's almost the exact same thing as embroidery vinyl. Uh, I've actually never used embroidery vinyl. I only use this stuff from Hobby Lobby because it's so easy for me to get. There's a Hobby Lobby that's close by, uh, and these go on sale every other week for 50% off. Although, I guess Hobby Lobby is kind of redoing everything, like you can't use the 40% off coupon anymore, but apparently they're supposed to have more sales more often. And frankly, I don't use the 40% off coupon that much. I, go, I know what weeks they've got fabric on sale and what weeks they've got this stuff on sale, and that's about all I buy there. Uh, but anyway, we got some glitter, we got this kind, that's very glittery. Uh, I prefer in an applique shirt, I prefer if I'm using something glittery to use, let me grab it, to use heat transfer vinyl. I like it over this, it's, these are just so thick. Um, but either way, I don't have um, HTV in black, so we're gonna be doing her hair in this. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a mermaid with awesome hair, and we're gonna use this skin tone. It's kind of the medium one. Yeah, it's like the medium one. Am I using that one or that one? I had, I matched my thread. Let me go check. Okay, I lied. We're using this one. This is the darkest one. 
Uh, I'm probably going to eventually do samples of all of them so people can see. Um, but for today, we're going to use this one. And when is that one? That one is on the website. Okay, sorry, I had to stop there for a second because someone came to pick something up. I had a bunch of stuff dropped off yesterday that is piled up here. I do, most of my business is local. Again, I need to bump up the Etsy stuff, so that's what we're working on. But anyway, I had a bunch of stuff dropped off yesterday, a bunch of stuff going out today, so I had to stop there for a minute. But anyway, we're gonna use this. This is cinnamon. Uh, it is the darkest next to the black. Uh, and you could use the black for the hair, but again, I'm gonna use the sparkle uh, vinyl. And I will probably, I got another one. When we go to the computer, I'll tell you all about the design I bought. But I bought another one that had longer hair, longer curly hair, and I might just use the plain uh, black for that. But this one, today we're going all out. So, like I said, I've got this. These are in the ribbon section of Hobby Lobby, and it's called faux leather. And my understanding, again, I've never used embroidery, official embroidery and vi vinyl, but it's the same stuff. Um, I got I have this one that's very mermaid, and I have this one that's mermaid, but for today, we're going to use this one because I haven't used it yet, and I think it's super pretty. So we're going to use that for the number, we're going to use this for the hair, and then we're going to use this for the uh, tail. And again, I wanted to use all of these so I could show you guys how to do the heat transfer vinyl and the embroidery vinyl when you're doing an applique design. So really our only fabric is going to be our cinnamon flesh tone. Uh, so let's go over to the computer. I'm gonna show you the design and we're gonna go through a lot of stuff on Embrilliance because I think it's important. Uh, it can be overwhelming when you first start off how to kind of merge because I didn't buy it like this. I had to merge designs, I had to buy different stuff and kind of bring it all together. And it takes a while to get everything set up, but then once you do it, you're good to go. So uh, let me take you over there and we'll take a look at all that. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, I'm, I never am sure if it's better to do one of the screen recordings or to just film it with my phone. Plus, someone is outside doing their lawn. So, hopefully you can hear me okay. But this is the design we're going to do. Um, and the reason why I wanted to bring you over here to show you all of this is because I did not buy this like this. I bought the mermaid separate. I already had the number, so I've got the numbers. I bought the shell separate. And then, of course, you know, you would use whatever font you wanted down here. Uh, so I had to bring all of this together. And I spent a long time getting everything organized the way I wanted it. But once you do that once, then you never have to do it again. You can use this design over and over again and just change out the name. Now, you would have to do it each time for each number, um, but not the whole thing. So let me show you. We're going to do this all over again. This is exactly what I want. I'm ready to go with this one. But I'm going to show you um, exactly how I did this. So... We're gonna start a new one here. Um, and I'll open up my, it should be under recents cause I just uh, bought it. I mean, just did this earlier. So we're gonna start with our number. Um, and I just randomly picked the number three. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's most popular. We're gonna start with three. Um, and then again, we'll have to make uh, others based on what we need. Then um, we want to merge. So here's the deal. So I guess if you uh, clicked merge, then you would go and um, open up the mermaid. 
which all of my stuff is kind of organized under um, embroidery downloads. And then I've got them all, not all, but they're kind of in categories. So we want this one, we have PES, and we're just gonna do, I did a pretty big one. Oh, why is this not working? Oh, right, because I picked working and I meant to pick stitched. So here's the deal. So you can go through and do all of that. I don't know why, but for me, I just find it easier to open up what I want. Um, and we want the big one and I just cut and paste it. I, I don't know why I do it that way. It's probably not the most efficient, but it's what I do. So we're going to cut and paste it. And so we want this mermaid. Uh, is that the size I used? Let's see. Let's go back to the one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the big one. Um, she is a three and a half by six. Let's make sure. Oops, not that one. Yeah, okay. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead for now and uh get rid of the well no I'm not. We'll keep we'll keep the hoop. Sometimes I get rid of this hoop um showing just so I can see better. Uh, actually, yeah, let's do that. So to get rid of the hoop, you just, um, go right here. No, wait, um, here to view. Wait, did I do that? Oh no, this is to change your hoop. See, I, sometimes I'm on fire and I know exactly what I'm doing in Embrilliance and then sometimes I don't. So to get rid of the hoop, you go up here and you go to view and let's just get rid of the hoop just so you guys can see better. So we've got our three, and then you just position your mermaid where you want her. I've seen them where the mermaid is totally separate. I like things overlapping a little bit. So we'll put her there where we want her. And then um, I had the seashell. So we'll get the seashell. And again, I don't, you can merge everything. But especially since I had, I'd already used it, it's right under here under recent opens. So to me, it just makes more sense. But so we're going to paste her there and move it over, like, let's say there, um, just kind of wherever you want it. Um, and then you would just type in your, the name you want. We'll use my name because that's fun. Um, and I am using the Sarah font. I have way too many fonts over here. I need to kind of work on this whole mess. I think if you get a higher, uh, version of, not a higher version, but if you get a different add-on for Embrilliance, you can, uh, organize that stuff better, but I don't have that. So we're gonna use my name just for fun. Um, and if you are brand new to embro um, embroidery, embrilliance, whatever, uh, you do need to remember to kind of get your letters. Uh, once you type in, it's not really perfect the way you want it. You want it to look, a font like this, you want it to look like cursive, where everything is connected. Well, I say that. I mean, I guess sometimes you don't. It depends on what look you're going for, but I always try. My name's not very good for this font because they don't really connect as well. That's a little too close, I think. So they're going to be kind of separated, but you can zoom in and then really look at it. Let's see. Yeah, that looks terrible. Um, there we go. Move that up a little. Move that over. And then our L's and our I's are just not going to be connected. I wish this tail was a little bit longer. Okay, that's good enough for that. So, now, oh, man, I don't like the way that looks at all. For purposes of this, the name isn't important right now. So 
Well, let's use the one, I liked the one in my sample, so let's use that name. Okay, so that's better. Like I said, you want to kind of move these over and make it look like everything is connected. Okay, uh, and then you can, we'll worry about centering all of that in a minute. But what I really wanted to show you guys, hello, was how to deal with some of the situations going on up here. So when you have all of this overlapping stuff right here, it creates bulk. Now you can, oftentimes in Brilliance will take care of that for you. But when you're doing applique, it doesn't necessarily do that. If you can see right here where the seashell meets the three, I don't want all of this satin stitching to happen. That's gonna be way too bulky. Um, same over here and over here at the tail and at the hair. You don't want all of that pink um, satin stitching to happen before you place your, um, especially for me, you, when you use uh, something like embroidery vinyl or that faux leather, that stuff is kind of thick. And if you've got that thick plus this under there, to me, it just does not create a nice looking garment. So the way you do that, and this was confusing at first. So sometimes when you combine stuff, you can just go up here to these little scissors and click remove hidden stitches. So let's do that and let me show you what happens here. So remove hidden stitches. So it got rid of, See how, oh, hello, did it not? Let's do, sometimes I go up here to Stitch Simulator to see what it's doing. It kind of shows better. Oh, it didn't skip, I wonder why. Oh, I know, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me go back. Okay, so we've overlapped this. So our whole thing, we gotta combine the whole thing. So you take all of, oops. You take all of those, kind of um, group them all together. And then that's what we wanna do. We wanna go up here and we wanna go to group. So now they're all grouped together. And if I hit remove hidden stitches, then when you go to Stitch Simulator, you can see it's not going to stick. Oh my goodness, what is happening? Why is it not removing those? Well, if you know why it's not removing those, tell me, but that's not how I do it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Here's what I do. Okay, so everything's ungrouped, right? So we're gonna take the seashell and we're gonna come over here to the right-hand side and you see we've got our placement stitch we have our stitch for tacking down the fabric, and then we have our satin stitch. You need to go into Embrilliance and assign these as applique. So the way you do that is, see I've clicked on the placement stitch, and you can click right here, and then you go up here to where it says applique. And it says not applique. We want it as the applique position. Then we want the next step to be the applique material, okay? So this is all gonna make sense here in a minute. Let's go through and do the others. So for the mermaid, we have her hair, and that is a placement, or position is what they call it. The next one is the material, then her body is position, and material, and then, oops, and then we have one more, which is the tail, and we have position, and material. 
Now, when we go in and we select all of these and we go to remove hidden stitches, see how they all went away? Now I don't have any of that satin stitching underneath the seashell. I don't have any of the satin stitches under her hair or under the um, tail, none of those things. So that's going to decrease a lot of the bulk. Now I, you could stop here. You could stop right here. You could go put this on your machine and you would get beautiful results. What I did with this particular design, again, because I am using some heavier vinyl, I don't really want the vinyl under the seashell. I also want everything to be efficient. So since these are all separate designs, if you look over here on our right hand side, we're going to do the three, then we're going to do the mermaid, then we're going to do the seashell. Well, it makes more sense to do as many of your uh, placement stitches and tack down stitches as you can in a row. So let's move some stuff around. And the way you move things around, um, so what I want to do is after it does my three and I have tacked down my vinyl for the three, I now want it to do the placement stitch for this seashell so I can cut around it and not have a bunch of vinyl under there. So what I do is I go over here, let's condense that so we can see a little better, is I go to the position for the seashell and I'm gonna move it up here before it does the satin stitch. Do you see how I did that? It's all you do is you grab what you want. Let's do the, um, the everything else too. So you go over here, you grab the one you want. We're just getting the ones that are positioned for now. You click it, make it blue, and then you put it in between where you want it to go and you see it made that blue line with the circle dot there and you move it. So now it's going to do, it's gonna put that uh, three down. I'm gonna have my vinyl down. Now it's gonna do all the other placement stitches so I can kind of cut that out and like that vinyl now won't be under her hair and it won't be under the tail. Plus, again, it just makes everything more efficient. So we're going to move, that's the material. We don't want the material yet. We're just doing placement stitches. So we're gonna do placement stitches there, or position is what they call it in, in Brilliance. We're gonna do her tail position. And so now, did I do everything? Did I get her body? Uh, let's see. Yeah, and you can just kind of go through and look and no, nothing else says position. So I know all my positions are up here. Now, there is one other thing with this. If any of the, now that we've moved stuff, or, well, you know what, let's do that in just a minute. So we've got all the replacement stitches down. Now we can go through, I'm gonna go ahead and do the satin stitch on the three. So that's good there. Now you see we've got all of our um, uh, tack down stitches in a row except for the seashell. So let's move that up. Again, this just, you, you don't have to do this. It just makes it more efficient because I can tack everything down and cut. Uh, and then I'm only taking my hoop off the machine one time. So let's see, let's move our seashell up under there. Now, some designs you do have to um, be careful in which order you're placing stuff down. Uh, our mermaid was already in the, right, in the right order and since our seashell is way over here, it kind of doesn't matter. But so now we've got everything uh, tacked down and then it'll start in on all of the satin stitches. 
And so again, that just makes everything that much more efficient because once you've tacked down all your fabric, you've cut out all your applique, you can just let the machine do its thing uh, and do all the rest with, and you can kind of have time to do other things, walk away from it or whatever. So this is the part I was going to mention a minute ago. So we're going to work on colors now. And one thing to keep in mind is if you send something from Embrilliance, let's look over here. See how I have three, um, oops, sorry. See, I have three dark browns in a row. If I send that to my machine, the machine will not create <clears throat> any stops there. It will do all of those in a row. Like you won't be able to um, put your, uh, here we go, which, which three in a row is it? Okay, so it's these three in a row that are all brown. It will, it'll just do these in a row. The machine won't stop at all. So you won't be able to put a, a stop into your machine so that you can, because I, I, need, I need it to be able to stop after the hair so I can cut the hair out. Then I need it to stop after that so I can cut that out. And then I need it to stop after that so I can cut that out. Uh, and if you do them all in dark brown, the, once it gets to the machine, you won't be able to do that. And maybe what I'll do, um, let me just show you real quick. Let me, let me just send this to my machine, just like it is. And we'll go over there and we'll, uh, take a look at it and I'll, and then you can see what I mean. Um, do this. So I just make up whatever and no name. Okay. Let's go look at it. Okay. Sorry. I know the glare over here is kind of terrible, but um, we're not going to be on the screen for very long. So when you send a design to your machine, even though it's got appliques in it, the machine doesn't know when to stop. You have to assign that to it. And you do that in this screen right here. Uh, so typically what you would do, so, you know, we've got our three placement stitch. Well, we want to stop it after that. Oops. We want to stop it after that to put our fabric down. So you press this little hand and that creates a stop. We also need one after that so we can stop it and cut the fabric. Well, look what happens here. So then it would do our satin stitch and then you see how those are all together? That's because they're all the same color in Embrilliance. So you can't, there's no way to, you know, I could, yes, I could stop that but you don't have time to get your fabric for each layer. So we need to go over here and we need to make those all different colors. So let's go back to the computer. Hopefully that made sense as to why we needed to change some of these colors over here. Uh, but first I wanna change some design elements. We'll change those colors first and then we'll worry about the other colors. I want um, the three, to be purple, so you click that, you go to color. Um, I don't, for some reason, I think we're gonna, we'll call it lilac. Um, oh, why didn't that change? Hang on. Oh, that was the wrong thing. Sorry. Sorry. This is what I want to be purple. Okay. Uh, sometimes I find it hard to find the color I want. We'll just use purple. Uh, in this whole list. So one thing you can do uh, is, we'll do it with the name. I don't want the name black. I want it um, the same color as her shells. Uh, if you can't find the color, you can type it right here in the search and hit go. And I'm one of those people, like none of this matches up with what's actually on my machine. It's like these number, like 624 Lila. I don't even use Brother Embroidery Thread. Um, I'm just kind of trying to get an idea of what I want it to look like here. So we'll match that. Um, I'm actually going to make her uh, ring and earrings and this little thing in her flower. I'm going to make those purple as well. So. It's under yellow. And so if I, if I was scrolling through and I couldn't find purple, you can just type in purple right here. 
uh, and then it'll show up. So we got that. Uh, if I recall correctly, her hair is dark brown and I actually want it to be black. And then her eyes will be black. Uh, I think, let's check. That part of her hair. You probably don't even need to do that step if you're using the glitter vinyl but we'll go ahead and do it. Same same with the mermaid down here. Oh, I need to change that too. With the glitter vinyl, you probably don't need these scales. Well, especially if you use the embroidery vinyl that has the scales on it, you would probably just wanna delete that. And the way you do that is you go over to that step. Where are those? Right there. Um, and you just click it and you just hit delete and then they go away. Uh, but we will, I think we'll leave those. So we'll leave those. Oh no, actually, you know what? I already have, we'll, we'll leave them gone. Okay. So she's looking better. She's looking more like what I want her to look like. Uh, now again, about these colors down here, we cannot have those all in a row as the same color. So I will open that. Okay. So her hair, we'll just do the placement stitch in black to match what she, what it'll eventually be. And then here we can do the russet brown. Here we'll do mint, which I think is what the up uh, is. Why didn't that work? Oh, I know. So that's the other thing. You can't, you have to hit go. If you hit enter, it won't show up. Okay, so we've got her. Oh, that was for the fabric. Whoops, let's go back up here and do for the position. That's why I wasn't working. Okay, so this is the shell. And it's the mint. So now that's gonna do my placement stitch in that color. Then we go over here and this can be black because it's her hair. We go here and we can keep the dark brown. We can go here, but we cannot have dark brown again or else it won't stop. So we'll do the mint. See, I did it again. If you hit enter, it won't show up. You've got to go to go. Then you can click it and then you have to click okay. All right, so we can kind of look over here and we're looking pretty good. We have two blacks in a row, but I think that's her hair and her eyes. So in that case, yeah. So look, we've got her hair in black and we've got that part of her hair in black. I don't care if it makes that one step on the, um, on the machine because I don't need it to stop in between. Um, that for some reason is dark brown and I want it to be black to match her hair. And then I think we're pretty good to go. The only other thing that I would change is I might move, like let's move the final satin of the shell <clears throat> up here below, <clears throat> excuse me, the star. And then we can move, well actually let's move both of these up right after the tail because they're all the same color. So why have it, you know, cut the thread, go to a different uh, needle when they're all the same color? So let's move that up there. So now it'll do her tail, her star, and her uh, shell all in one go. And it, I mean, it'll cut the threads in between, but at least it won't switch needles. And again, this is all just to save time. More time on the front, but less time on the back end. So let's make sure. Um, 
all of our place, all of our material tacked down, whatever is uh, different colors. The only thing, the only other thing I would do is uh, change some colors up here to things that I know will be on my machine. Other things within the design, other colors within the design um, so that the machine isn't trying to pull, a, you know, it's only a six needle machine. So let's do the placement stitch here in purple. And this is on the three. Then we can do the uh, tack down and again, another color that's being used in our design. And then it'll start with these. Okay. The only other place I saw that was down here. Let's change that to a different color. So we, we're going to look at what's before it. It is a mint green, so I'm not going to pick mint green for this one. And again, these all get hidden, so it doesn't really matter what color they are. I just want them to be colors that are actually on my machine at the time. And the only colors on my machine at the time are these colors right here. So that actually looks pretty good. Another thing that you can do is you can again go up here to the stitch simulator and make sure everything is doing, since we've moved so many things around, um, is make sure that it's doing what you wanted it to do. So you click this little needle up here and then you can hit, you can move it just by yourself. Um, so we see how funky that three looks. Well, that's because um, we don't need a full three. And so again, once I've got all of these tack down stitches done, and you're not you're you're not putting fabric down yet. These are just your tack down. Then you can kind of cut out some of it. Like I'll cut in between the shell and the three, so that there's not a ton of bulk there. So it'll do all of our tack down, then it'll go through and it'll do the uh, satin stitch on the three. Then we'll start in with uh, putting our other fabrics down. So we'll put the hair down, we'll put the body down, we'll put the tail, and the shell. Then we can take it off our machine and cut everything. And then it'll just, then the machine just does its thing. So that's looking really good. Let's send this over to the machine and uh, go take a look at it, how it kind of stitches out. Okay, so here's our newly edited design. Um, I've got my screen kind of in a wacky position because to get the glare off. Um, but anyway, so now you can see that when we go to edit it and we're looking here now, We've got, so let's go ahead and do our stops while we're here. We need to stop after that one. We need to stop after that one. We need to stop after that one. Um, stop. Oh, actually, no, no, we don't, we don't actually need to stop after these. These are just our placement stitches. And uh, those, we don't need to stop after each one. We just need to stop after the last one, which is the tail. So then that'll stop the machine. We can go through and do all of our cutting and then it'll do our satin stitches. But you see now those are all now separate. Um, where as before, oh, oh my God, y'all, seriously? Okay, so it wouldn't have mattered with the placement stitches. It only matters with the, um, uh, with the tack down stitches. So I kind of led you astray there a bit. With these tack down stitches, we or placement stitches, we could have just left them all in the dark brown, but you, you don't want to do that for um, the tack down stitches. So we want it to stop after that so that we can cut that. Stop so we can cut. Stop so we can cut and stop so we can cut and then the rest the machine will do the rest so we'll close this and then i'm going to go ahead and run the first few 
Uh, I'm just doing this on a, um, you know, piece of scrap for a sample. Um, nothing fancy here. And then I've got my skin tone fabric ready. And on this, I put heat and bond light. But on the others, you don't need to. You don't do that on embroidery vinyl or faux leather that we're using. And you don't do it on the heat transfer vinyl. Uh, but let me do just the tack down stitches and stuff for the three. And then we'll use the embroidery vinyl on that. And I'll show you how you do that. Okay, so we've got our tack down stitch, and then I cut a piece of the embroidery vinyl or faux leather that's a little bit bigger than the three. Um, again, no need to put any heat and bond on the back or anything. You just put it down just like that. So then what we'll do is we'll not only run the uh, tack, yeah, the tack down I think a minute ago I said tack down, I meant to say placement, but we'll run the tack down stitch and then we will run, we actually don't need to stop after it because we're going to do the other placement stitches too, um, just so that we can do our cutting that way. So let me uh, run the machine and show you what I mean by that. Okay, so now we've got all of our placement stitches down and so what I'm going to do, you can see I've kind of already started picking at it here, I'm going to go ahead and cut around this. Um, and here, you know, it might be a little bit of overkill, but again, because the embroidery vinyl is so thick, um, and especially if you were going to do just regular fabric on the hair, you would kind of want to get rid of that bulk a little bit if you can. So I'm going to go through and cut these and then it'll do the satin stitch on the three. All right, we've got our satin stitch done um, and it's looking really cute. I like this, this vinyl. Um, and now we can do all the other applique pieces. So it starts with our hair and we're gonna do the glitter on that. Watch your fingers. Again, this stuff is thick, so you kinda gotta hold it down for a second. earlier if this was fabric <clears throat> we could probably just layer everything and only take our hoop off once but since this is so thick we want to get under there and cut that off so let me do that real quick so next it's kind of a mess up here but next it's going to do her body and it's her body is just fabric and our our skin toned um fabric so i've adhered some heat and bond light to it. You have to always remember to peel this paper backing off. And then we'll put that down and we'll let it stitch and we will um, cut around her as well. Okay, so the last thing that we need to tack down is our glitter vinyl. So I cut a couple pieces about the same size, and what you do on this is you have to, and this is heat transfer vinyl, just like you would use with a heat press machine. You have to peel this part off first. So peel off that carrier sheet, and then place it down, and the same over here, and then you just do your tack down stitches and then you cut it just like you would fabric. I have seen people tear it. Um, so that's an option that this never really works. Or I don't know. I don't know if it doesn't work for me or if it just makes me nervous, but I don't do it. I just cut it, but it cuts really easily. So that's why I like it better than the embroidery vinyl because it, it's really, really easy to cut this stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and um, tack these down. 
Okay, so pretty much everything that requires attention is done, and now we can just let the machine go to town. Um, I did not do an awesome job on some of this, but it's just a sample. A uh, couple of things. So remember when I did all that color switching? One thing I should have done is, like, see here how the uh, tack down um, color is white? That's a better choice than matching it on the glitter because it's hard to see, especially on this black. Like when I went to cut the black, it was really hard to see the thread. Um, and I even cut a little too close in a couple areas. It's not such a big deal on fabric, but uh, with this glitter, it's hard to see here. You know, you can see I did the same color and it's hard to see where I cut. And then I'm a little, um, you know, once we iron, most of that should flatten out. Plus we're gonna do a bunch of satin stitch on top of it. But pretty much we're ready to go. I love her already. Look how beautiful she is. Uh, so I'm going to run the rest of the steps and then we'll take a look at it at the end. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> if she isn't just about the most amazing thing ever. She's so glitterly, glitterly, glittery and beautiful. So the final step when you're using HTV and when you're using fabric with the heat and bond light on the back is you need to iron it or press it. Um, so I'll go and do that. And then, um, then all that's left is taking a picture of it and putting it on Etsy. But that's how you um, use the, the vinyl and the glitter vinyl. Uh, one thing I didn't point out, remember how I was debating whether to put these little scales in there? I probably could have skipped them. I didn't do the ones in the hair because um, it looks so great with just the glitter there. So I'll even do, um, probably put this little clip of my video up on Etsy. Uh, you know how you can, when you're doing listings now, you can put a little video clip. And I think this will be a good one to do that so you can really see how much it glitters. I mean, glitters. Why do I keep saying that? How much it shimmers. Um, well, glitters, I guess that's the right word, right? That's a verb, whatever, adjective, whatever. All right. All right, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm going to go put this fabulousness on my Facebook, Facebook. Well, I'll actually, we'll put it on my Facebook page and my Etsy page. Um, and again, I'm going to do, use the other uh, skin tones too, just so people can really get an idea. But again, if you found this video helpful at all, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to stop by um, Project Fabrics on Instagram and uh, enter for a chance to win one of these bundles of the skin tones. And there's going to be other goodies in there too. They just haven't arrived yet. They're supposed to come tomorrow, um, but they will be in the box. So thanks for stopping by. Talk to you later. Bye.